Hi, I'm Ryan Smasky, curator of the Battleship New Jersey Museum and Memorial. This month we're talking about shipbuilding, so today we're going to talk about the two methods of joining metal that were primarily used on this ship. The older of the two methods, riveting, required a lot of skill and was on the way out. The newer method, welding, was only used on parts of this ship, but by the mid-1940s, new ships were being built entirely by welding. We're on the O2 level amidships at the ship's expansion joint. The hull was mostly riveted together, with the riveted plates being able to flex as temperatures cause them to expand and contract and as the motion of the waves cause them to go up and down. The welded superstructure, however, was more brittle and could not flex as easily, so an expansion joint like this was installed. This allows the ship to bend at the midpoint where the most tension is. You can see today that we have it covered up with a rubber coating. It's two pieces of metal overlapped with rubber underneath. The underlayer of rubber is 20, 30, 40 years old and is started to rot through. So we get water leakage down there. So we've got it covered over with a roofing compound and eventually we'll end up welding a plate over it. The ship doesn't sail anymore, we don't need her to flex that much. Most of the hull was made by riveting, which two plates of metal overlap. A red hot rivet is driven between them with a head flattened out. Here you can see one of the gusset plates, which reinforces one of those riveted seams. Riveting is the older way of making iron and steel hull warships. Behind me, across the river, you can see the cruiser Olympia which was riveted together in the early 1890s. While riveting has gone out of fashion with ships, it's still in common use today. We're standing by one of the ship's aircraft, which is riveted together. In fact, that's where the term Rosie the Riveter comes from. Rosies weren't trained to rivet ships together, as that was a dying technology and very difficult to do. They were riveting aircraft together with pop rivets. It was much easier to train them to weld. The Philadelphia Navy Yard where this ship was built employed about 400 female welders during World War II. Now we're back on the ship's flight deck where doubler plate was added in the 1980s. Modern work done to the ship, by which I mean post-construction work, was almost exclusively welded. It gives us a good idea of what is an original feature and what was something added later in the ship's career. This month, September 2019, we're talking about construction on the battleship. Be sure to come out and visit us. We're doing an activity for kids where we build Lego battleships in the wardroom. We're showing off artifacts related to the ship's construction all over the ship, including the captain's cabin and the ship's library. Tune back in next week for more content, and remember to like, share, and subscribe.